All right, what's going on, guys? So if you haven't heard, there's this new thing going around about the monkeypox, and a lot of media outlets and people online have just been flaring it up. And I find it, at this point, very comical because of everything we went through with the COVID and just so many news items that just get blown up out of proportion in some sense. And the fear-mongering and the panic that ensues, especially among some people that I would say call themselves Christians, but then they end up just reacting so negatively in such in such a panic, it, it's very comical, right? And so, yeah, you have the people that are, uh, you know, the normies or the normal people, whatever you want to call it, they just end up reacting to it. They just eat it up and they end up going and doing various things, taking a vaccine or doing whatever it is that they want to do to react to the news. But as if you've been following me, as you've seen me react before to many items of news, the first thing you have to do as you hear it is to ask the Lord, how do I receive this? First of all, is this real? Is it fake? Is it blown out of proportion? What's actually going on with regards to this news? And so if you look, and again, I don't know how true this is, but there's this map here that I'll briefly show where monkeypox has been detected. You can tell these are all European and North American countries. And specifically, these are NATO countries, right? And so wh why is it that other countries, especially in South America, Africa, and Asia, why isn't this being shown, right? And what's more comical is that as people dug into it, and some of these photos I got off some channels on Telegram, I don't know what the original source is, but you can do this research on your own. And you can tell that some of these images have just been recycled. The same thing we saw with some of the initial Ukraine reporting. The same thing is happening here. You have old pictures of and you, and you can literally double check these things. Maybe they took it down, but you can use the Wayback Machine just to go look at these things. But these pictures are recycled from things from before and specifically with shingles. And so you can see here with some of these photos. And if you want, you can pause this, double check it yourself. But these are pictures that have been recycled, right? And so I'm not saying that this disease or this virus or whatever is causing this skin issue, whether it's actually shingles, whether it's actually something new called monkeypox or something old that has existed, or is it an adverse reaction from COVID or vaccines or just any number of things people are talking about. And so however you want to look at this, you have to see that it's being set up as a narrative to build for something. Is it fear mongering? Is it to get people indoors again, just like with COVID in time for the midterms? Is it to instill this panic so that people have a, a desire to ask for more things like another vaccine or lockdowns or w whatever it is, right? And so I'm not here to theorize and, and go down a, a rabbit hole for many that may call it conspiracy, but it's very obvious how the media and many people are jumping on it and then they're uh, playing it up as something more than it is in, in the sense that it's, it's growing, yes, but monkeypox and all these other things like shingles have been around for a very long time. And so this leads me to what the Lord showed me today that I want to share as an encouraging word for you. And in Matthew 24, it talks about the signs of the times and the end of the age. And I'm not going to uh, give a calendar of events here, but here's one thing that has always stuck out to me. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, in verse 6, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And so again, I'm not here to preach a doom and gloom mentality. I think we have some time, and I know that God is going to do a lot of great things still. But what's prophesied, especially in the Bible, is that towards the end of the age and into the tribulation and before Jesus returns again, that there's going to be these things, wars and rumors of wars. And you can even say pestilences, which is what this seems to be, and rumors of pestilences, right? So famines and rumors of famines, earthquakes and rumors of earthquakes. You can, and again, some of the, the purest theologians are going to argue with me about this, but what is the point here? It's that it's causing fear. It's causing fear-mongering. It's allowing you to get your attention away from God, your attention away from the good things and the Word of God, the truth, and to be in the presence of God as opposed to being in the presence of fear, in the presence of reactionary, fleshly, 
responses that are going to lead you down a path for which you're going to rely on other things besides the Lord. And so a lot of people right now, again, are reacting again. I'm here to tell you this is not a big deal. Yes, it's it maybe whatever this is, it exists. It seems as from the pictures. I don't know how prevalent it is. I don't know if it's going to build. I don't know if people are actually being diagnosed with this left and right and it's spreading like some mad virus whatever is happening and we'll see let's let's wait and see right but, but what's very clear is that there's a coordinated effort to build this up right and there's so many other diseases other things in the world that's it, that's in existence and it's bad and it's not good and we want to pray over it we want to pray healing protection and and just the covering of the Holy Spirit on people. But even in this instance, when there's a coordinated effort to drive up something that isn't that big of a deal in, the, in that sense. And again, I'm going to get some heat for this. But what I mean is that, is this newsworthy among all the other diseases, all the other newsworthy items in the world? Does it proportionally affect the population to the degree that, yes, we have to sound the alarm, so to speak? And so again, uh, guys, be very weary of this kind of news and what is essentially biblically prophesied, pestilences, famines, and all these different things. But at the same time, prepare, pray, get in the presence of God. And more than ever, it's a time where Bible prophecy is coming true. And you are looking at the beginning of the sorrows, the end of the age uh, very soon. And so again, I'm not going to give a timeline. I think we have a little, we still have some time. But again, it's not for us to be panicking. It's not for us to just sit back and do nothing either. But again, we have to be aware. And a lot of people are going to give me flack again for talking about the negative and talking about these things, these bad things. Why don't you just stick to the positive stuff? But the Lord also showed me that you have to be balanced. You have to be giving people warnings, sounding the alarm so that people can be ready to respond appropriately, but at the same time, giving words of encouragement, exhortation, but more importantly, to get people fixated back on Christ. And so again, all glory goes to God. Let's keep praying. Be aware of Satan's devices. But again, guys, stop reacting. Stop looking at this and thinking it's a big deal. Again, discern the news properly and then react appropriately in your own walk with, with him. So God bless you guys. Love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.